Now, you know, if you've been watching it, my wife said I need to have more challenging subjects. So tonight's message is the emotional Christian. You know, because when you look at that, you got to understand this. You know, let me, let me give it to you from uh, uh, Wikipedia. Because what people don't realize, when you become a born-again believer, you have the right and the privilege to let your spirit lead you. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, God tells you, you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Now, the Bible tells you in Ephesians, I mean, in, in uh, Corinthians, that, that now your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And then in Ephesians, he says, you have an inner man. And that's who God is. That's where he lives. When he moves in, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he moves into your spirit. And the challenge with that is that when you were born to this earth, when your body wanted to eat, you cried. When you wanted your diaper change, you cried. But then as you develop, your intellect, your mind, your will, and your emotions kicked in. And you realize, you know, I can talk. I can say I need my diaper change or I'm hungry. But what happens is when you get born again, everything changes. Because now you have to go by your spirit. Your, some call it your conscience. It's your inward witness. You know, that's why I make a point. When people, when it, he says every good and precious gift, it comes from God. And I hear people say, something told me. No, I'm going to give God his recognition. The Holy Ghost done told me everything's going to be all right. He's telling me what to do. And when it lines up with the word and I get the blessing from what he says, it's God speaking to me through my spirit. Because emotions... Now listen, first place to let you know it's not your spirit, they're bi biological. They're based on your nervous system, on your, how you feel about things. What brings you pleasure or displeasure? Or uh, what intertwines with your mood? Oh my God, you ever been, a, been around moody people? Somebody made a big record about that moody woman changed like the weather. <laughs> well, let them go through pregnancy or menopause. Men, you in for, and then this is what they don't tell you. Men, you go through it too. <laughs> if you're in love with a woman and y'all married, when she goes through that, you go right along with her. Because, see, it's my wife's fault I got over 180 pounds. When I got married, I was 170, soaking wet. But when she got pregnant with our daughter, I was eating right along with her because I didn't want her to feel bad. <laughs> but m emotions can be based on personalities or or, or your disposition, or your motivations. And what God is wanting you to do, now we're going back to Joshua 24, verse 15, because Joshua made a demonstrative statement. He's making a decision. I'm not going to let anything hinder me. I'm going to let what God says guide me and strengthen me. Good place to say amen. He says, and if it seems and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose. And this is the part that we have to worry, we have to be concerned with about God. Because he gives us the choice. He won't make you serve him. It's an invitation. And you can say, well, this is foolish is what you're doing. That's okay. But if I'm in light of God's word and you reject what God is saying, then you will miss God and you will have to pay a horrible price for it. He says, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me, this is, my, this is me speaking, I don't have authority over your house, I have authority over mine. As for me, and my house, what I'm responsible for, we will serve the Lord. So there won't be no drinking, no frivolity in my house, because this is my house. And I give my house unto the Lord. Now the Good News translation says it like this. If you are not willing, that's in your emotions. If you're not willing to serve him, because see, that's where it comes up. Because when I say an emotional Christian, there's a good chance that you're not. 
Because you won't serve God unless it move. I, I can't do it unless the spirit moves me. Well, God is omnipresent. And he's always here. And so if you don't recognize him, then you will miss him. He says, if you're willing to serve him. There's no if. No, God, I made my decision. I'm going to serve you no matter what. Um, NAS translation says, if it's disagreeable in your sight. No, if, my, if I don't want to serve the God, let me tell you. There's sometimes when physically or mentally, I don't want to serve God. Because either I'm sleepy or I'm tired or I want to do something else. Or in my head. It's thinking about, well, you got this to deal with, that to deal with, and this. But no, I'm going to make sure. I'm just talking about me. I don't know about you. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to take time and serve the Lord. Why? Because I want the rewards of serving God. Do you? I know I do. He says, in the NIR translation like this, but suppose you don't want to serve. That's emotions. Because your heart is crying out. Your heart, in, in Genesis 1, I think it's verse 26, he says, he made man in his own image. In other words, he gave each human being a spirit. But he gave us the choice whether or not we will let our spirit enjoin or be a part of who God is. And I want my spirit to be a part of what God is doing. And the message translation says it like this. If you... And the only reason you don't serve God is primarily either you listen to your flesh, your body, or you're listening to your head. Your spirit will say, I want Jesus. Your spirit will say, I want to serve God. I want to be in his presence. But your head will say, you can't live like that. You're not going to be happy. You're not going to be able to accomplish that. No, I don't care what you say, Mr. Head. I'm going on what the creator of the universe. Now, in the second part, the second scripture that we're working on, it's from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, because this is serious about bringing your emotions under check, because you got to be ready to hear from God. And if your emotions are greater, making a greater sound than your spirit or the word of God, you will follow your emotions, especially when you're involved with something that brings about fear. Because I believe it's in Timothy, he says, God has not given us the spirit of fear but a power and might of a sound mind. Let me see if I can find that. I know it's in Timothy. He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And let me tell you, one of the spirits that you find uh, in fear is emotions. Yes, yeah, it's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Turn there with me. He says, for God hath not given us, he's talking to the body of Christ, the spirit of fear, false evidence appearing real. Why? Because it, it works on your emotion. Okay. You're at peace. Then all of a sudden you hear a noise. All of a sudden your mind starts working. You, you start getting chill bumps on you. You start going... I, and that's why I don't waste my time going to horror movies. I'm not going to pay somebody to make me afraid. I got enough to deal with in the natural. Hey, if you want to go do it, that's you. But I'm not going to do nothing that's going to invite fear into my life. <laughs> that's why I don't get on the roller coaster. <laughs> if it means saving a life, I do it. But if it just means to bring fear, no, I pass. But he says, for God have not. He didn't give you fear. He didn't give you the emotions that control you or limit your relationship with God. He says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. But, here's that, that conjunction word. Now we're about to change this whole sentence. But of power. What is he saying? He gave you the authority over your emotions. Authority over your fear. And then not only did I give you the authority or the power over him, I gave you my love. And then look what he says. A sound mind. Oh, my goodness. I need a sound mind. 
Because why? If I don't have a sound mind, now I, I, I'm not passing any judgment on that. But you know, 9-11 is going to be 20 years in September. And I moved here to Monroe the week before that. And I remember one of the horrors of watching, what was it, 3,000 people lose their lives needlessly because of some demented ideology that they, they were doing right. And now they in hell, those that were, who comprised this foolishness. But the thing is, I saw people give up. And I'm not judging them because I don't know. I wasn't there. I saw people jumping out without trying to walk down the, 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 uh, the building, without trying to go, because that fear had gripped them. I'm not putting them down. I'm not in that position. But I know this. When you are run by your emotions, which are extremely tied to fear, you will make mistakes. Instead of doing what is right, you run into danger because of fear, or because of emotions. Let's go back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We read it from the Amplified. And do not be conformed. In other words, God has made a way for you that you don't have to be conformed. You're facing the same thing. The Bible says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. You're facing the same things as everybody else, but you have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit living in you. And he always, glory to God, he always has a way out. But you're going to have to shut your emotions down. You have to calm your fears. And so you can hear from your heart where God lives. He says, be not conformed to this world any longer with your superficial values. Oh, God, I'm going to die. No, I'm going to die from old age. Oh, it ain't going to work for me if I was just lucky. I can't depend on luck. Luck didn't die for me. <laughs> and, and, and see, that's why I had to quit gambling, because I was not lucky at all. <laughs> not remotely lucky. All they did was take my money. Superficial values and customs. But be transformed. And progressively, see, God knows where you are, and he wants to transform your thinking and take you to a whole nother dimension in life. He wants you to be dependent upon his word and the leadership of his spirit so you can bring your emotions. Oh, look, thank you, Lord, for reminding me. You know, uh, when we go on a fast, we want fast, when we abstain from food, you know, we're going to fast. We want everybody to know, oh, I'm fasting. No, fasting doesn't change God, it changes you. It's designed by God to make you focus on him and not what you're giving up and bring your body and your emotions under. Because I know when I go on a fast, look like everybody wants to buy me lunch or the food smells better than ever before. But he's saying to us, he's wanting to transform. You've got to learn how to think like God. If not, your thinking will get in the way. You think because you got away with something that it's okay. No. God's telling you. You know, that what tickles me. You know, I, I need to look up that law, but I've heard it countless times. It's against the law to lie to the FBI. Now, come on now, because I always remember that we had three super, uh, insurance uh, superintendents, three in a row, went to prison, three in a row, went to prison. And the last one, who I thought was a very nice guy, he may still very well be, but all they could convict him on was lying to the FBI. My God. And then he was a trained attorney. He was an attorney. But they got him on lying to the FBI. But listen, this is important. Don't lie to yourself. Tell self, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust this word. I'm not going to let my emotions, I'm not going to let my fears rule me because I got the victory no, no matter what. He says, as you mature spiritually, oh my goodness, it's time out to being a baby Christian. I understand you didn't want to go through the procedure. God called you to be a medical professional, be a doctor. And you knew it since third grade. You had to 
the coat, you had the stethoscope, you had the glasses, you knew I'm going to be a doctor. But then when you got into high school, you had to fight to get into an accredited university because you knew the next step you had to take the MCAT, I think that's what you call it, <coughs> excuse me. You had to take the test to get into medical school. You had, had to go there. But then when you get to college, they don't go by your personality anymore. You're not, the, you're not the big man or the big person on campus anymore. You're around other people that are serious about studying. What am I trying to say? Yes, you were called to do it, but you got to go through the test, the trials, and the tribulations. Because I never forget this. Um, I met a man who got into medical school who quit. I'm like, wow. I never heard of nothing like that. I only met one. Got into medical school and quit. Because even though you call to be a doctor, you still got to pass certain requirements. And what he's saying is, you got to mature spiritually. See, it's one thing when you're two or three-year-old, I want to be a doctor. It's another thing when you get ready to get out of high school or go to college. Then you gotta you gotta put on your a whole nut your big boy hat. Then when you get out of uh, uh, undergrad, then you gotta believe gotta get into an accredited medical school. Then you gotta go through all that. But he's saying that you mature spiritually. That's what we all about. You gotta be able to see the truth, no matter what. It's a good place to say amen. By the renewing, and I, I work with people. Work with them all the time. And it amazes me how they can do certain things, but they're unrenewed in certain areas. Because they not let God take jurisdictional control of their heart and then their mind and then their body. Because they know, you know, and, 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 and I said this before. And Luke, he says, what's done in the dark is going to be brought to the light. How can you think that you're preaching the gospel and what you're doing is not going to be exposed? That's craziness. Because you can't keep getting away with it. God keeps offering you a chance to get right with him. But the devil is looking for trying to find a fault in you. And when he does, when somebody knows it, the devil's going to put it out there. Good place to say amen. He says, by renewing your mind, focusing on godly values. Is that you? Ethical attitudes. I'm changing the way I think. No, now it's not right for me to cuss you out. Now I'm going to pray for you. So prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That's what God is saying. He wants us to operate in his will. Is that you? That is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Because if you don't learn how to bring the word in and control your emotions, you may be saved, but you're going to be an emotional wreck. I can't go unless, you know, I can't go if I step on a crack. Oh, somebody, oh, where my lucky rabbit's foot? Uh, uh, I can't think of any more of them things. You, call it, you can't find it. They used to have a lot of those when I was a kid. A lucky rabbit's foot. And then somebody finally gave me the revelation. If the rabbit's foot was so lucky, what happened to the other, not four, but four? <laughs> other three. <laughs> and look, let's turn to uh, Exodus chapter 15. Because this reminds me of an emotional person. A person who has everything going, but not thankful. Uh, when you turn to Exodus 15, you're looking at the children of Israel who just watched. Now listen, this wasn't for them. You watch what God did to the people that were out of his will. And you would think you would catch on because you, you're going to pick up that part when they had just left Pharaoh and went through the ten plagues, the blood in the water, the frogs, the gnats, the lice, the flies. Diseased stocks, boil, hail, locusts, darkness, and death of your firstborn. You witness what happened when a human being refused to submit themselves to God. Pharaoh, all he had to do was say, Lord, you didn't ask me to serve. You asked me to let your people go. 
All I had to do was let them go. But you see, when your mind and your will is confused, you make wrong choices. But look, we picking up the children of Israel. They had just crossed the Red Sea. They saw, they saw Pharaoh and his army destroyed. And look what it says in Exodus 15, verse 21. And Miriam had answered them, Sing ye to the Lord. Oh, they rejoicing. They just got released, released from over 400 years of slavery. They took all the gold. They just watched all their enemies drown. This is what happens when you get born again. All your enemies are drowned. But if you don't know that, you can go right back to that same foolish person you were that was enslaved for over 400 years. He says, And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Yes, Lord. The horse and rider hath he thrown into the sea. They're shouting and dancing before God. Why? Because God had set them free from, from slavery. But then you look down to verse 26. And this is another prophetic word. And he said, if thou wilt diligently, is this you? Because see, this is not an emotional statement. If I will diligent, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Because you know what God is saying and you still want to do wrong. That's in your emotions or in your flesh. And there's a price you're going to have to pay for. It's not what God wants. He wants you to hear and honor his word. He says, hearken to the voice. That means listen with the intent to do. To the Lord thy God. And we'll do that which is right. Lord, I'm, de I'm dedicated to doing what is right before you. In his sight. I'm, gonna do what I I'm dedicated to doing what is right. I'm not going by my emotions anymore. I'm not going by my feelings. Because uh, you hear that all the time. These people who have certain fame and certain attractions spending millions and millions of dollars for security. Some fool drove into this famous person, uh, drove, ran his car through the gate talking about, I need to talk to her. No, you don't need to talk to her. You need to talk to that prison cell you're going to be in. But in his mind, in his emotions, he thought he was right. Is that you? I can't live without him. Yes, you can. If he hurts you, go to God. God will replace him with far better. Because <laughs> I'm saying, I, I, I didn't know this, but uh, President Biden's wife, had a horrible marriage and she had to get a divorce. And you know what she said? If I hadn't have divorced him, I wouldn't have met Joe Biden, the man of my dream. Now look, you talking about a come up. Come on now. You go from a horrible marriage. I don't know what the man did or didn't do. But you come from a horrible marriage. You miss God. You miss everything. But you marry, end up marrying a gentleman that became the president of the United States. Is that a slap in his face or not? <laughs> Go interview him. What are you going to say? I, 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 I didn't know. <laughs> and he said, if thou wilt diligently. See, this is getting past your emotions and your flesh. Hearken, listen with the intent to do. The voice of the Lord thy God. And will do that which is, in, is right. If you know in your heart you're doing wrong. Why won't you stop? Because you're listening to your flesh or your emotions. I don't want to let my emotions rule me. Because there's a lot of time why you're angry. Because of your emotions. You didn't have it your way. I've dealt with people like that. They fall apart because their emotions are ruling them. And you're trying to reach them, but they're hard to reach because they're so emotional. And we'll give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. How much is all in Swahili? How much is all in Japanese? How much is all in, 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 in German? All is all. And keep his, all his statutes. And I will put none of these diseases. See, I pray this over me all the time. I don't want no corona. I don't want no disease. It says, and none of these diseases will come upon thee. And I have brought upon thee 
that I brought, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He heals you. The reason they got sick is because they refused to do it God's way. Now here we're going to verse chapter 16. This is the part God was dealing with me about. He says, verse 1 of Exodus chapter 16. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. They've been set free. They watched all the enemies die. They got, they got the victory. They danced and the horse and rider been thrown into the sea. You would think, you would think that this euphoria would last. <laughs> there was this ballroom around the corner from my mother-in-law called Up Jumped the Devil. But come on, say it with me, Up Jumped the Devil. And the whole congregation of children of Israel murmured. What do they have to complain about? You were enslaved for over 400 years. You got all the money. You didn't get sick. You watched what God did to them. They wouldn't worship him. And all they had to do was let him go. What do you have to murmur about? Because murmuring will be found in your emotions or in your, or in your physical. And the whole congregation, what? The whole they all turned on God. They forgot if God did what he did, he's not through with you yet. When he gave you the born again experience, he's not through with you yet. He wants to do more for you. But remember what he says in Romans 12. You've got to develop and be spiritually mature.